Welcome to Automation Training Hub. In this video, we are going to learn how to create our own function block. Otherwise, you can call it as user-defined function block. For example, right now, in our program, we need a DOL starter, like four or five times. So what we do is we try to develop a program in this way. So start push button on, load is on. So the load address, you will, we will give it as a memory. And with the help of that, we try to trigger it. And latching will be given. In a stop push button will be given. So like this one, we need four set. So I can copy this uh, network, paste it. So instead of doing like that, I can convert this program as a single block. So that easily we can use it. So how we have to do it now, you can see in here, inside POU, POU means what? Program Organization Unit. So in this folder only, we have the main page. So if I right click in here, you can see add, add object. In that, we have function block. So when you're given function block, it will ask a name. So for, for the user defined block, what's the name we are going to give? So I'm just giving it as DOL. So for this function block, in which language we are going to develop a program it's asking. So I'm saying later, give OK. So now you can see, previously in uh, main page, what we'll have is only variable, end variable. That means these are the local variable which can be used in this page. Suppose if you have multiple pages now, if you declare one variable in here, that variable I can't use in another page. If you use another page now, that also what happens? Create as a separate variable. But in this page, you can see they give an option like a variable in input, variable output, as well as variable. So already we know variable is a local variable which can be used inside this page. And variable input output. So right now we are going to create a block. So in that block, we need pin connection in left side as well as in right side. So whatever pin connection we are going to give in left side, it will be inputs and right side will be output. So I think you remember when we place a timer, what happened? So input comes in left side, output means right side. So these things only we are going to assign with the help of variable in as well as variable out. So right now, in here, we are developing a program. So first, we'll place the symbols. So latching, I'll give it. I'll give a NC contact. In this, I'm giving the name as start. Enter. Inside, you can see start boolean, but don't give any addresses. Because the address we have to define in main page. Because we are going to use four times now. So different addresses we have to give. So we should not declare in here. That means uh, while you're developing the program for user defined function block, don't use any addresses. So right now, we want to assign the start as a left side pin. So you can see in here class. So change into variable input. When I give an OK, automatically it will see it in there. So right now, same way, stop. Variable. This also input, so enter. So I'm just giving the common term as load. So the load can be a motor, pump, anything it may be. So in here, variable out. So in here, latching, so we have to give the same. Okay. So now save it. Now go to your main page in here. Place box with the end. Just uh, give user different function block name. So we given the name as what? DOL. So type DOL. So automatically what happened? You can see the pin connection. So this will be 
इनपुट सो परसेंटेज आई एक्स सपोज इफ यू नीड अनदर वन ना अगेन बॉक्स विथ टी एन इन दट यू कैन गिव So in here, different address we have to give. So, so this one is another set. So right now, each block we have to give a name. That's a top question mark. So already you remember in A B B, whenever we use a block function blocks, top of the function block always it will ask what name for the block. So I'm just giving us. Uh, op1 operation 1 so this is you can see when we declare a variable automatically your block name comes as a type simply give okay same way this one op2 okay so right now you can build so you can see we don't have any other so i'll enable the simulation mode online login online run So now we can check it in here. You can see in here op one op two. It's showing plus sign. So that means in this name only all these data will be stored and it will process. So when I expand this one, you can see. So right now when I activate the input, what happen? Output is on. That means inside this user defined block, it's showing the details. What happening? so when we off it also the output remain in on when the stop push button is pressed it will off i have released it same goes in here so it's working so like this we can create our own function blocks suppose uh, in this uh, i want to control uh, another one page uh, then what we have to do now uh, in here right click add object so right now we want to control one uh, sub page so i'm creating another page as page 2 so program i'm just giving it as later so in here simple uh, just a input output i have done so right now this page we have to control from main page right so in your main page i'll create one network in this network again uh, same box with the n give the name as sub page name page 2 so automatically what happens now you can able to see just wait one minute so right now i'll just delete this one again i'll place it box with the n you can see it is an and uh, bit shift function that means uh, logic function we have in here if i change the name into page Two, that is your sub page name. Automatically, the input pin will be deleted, but the output connection will be there. So, select in this end or this end, delete in your keyboard. Press delete button so that it will convert into what call function. So it is a, when we activate the switch, it will call this page. Then only sub page will work. Once the sub page uh, completed, it should return back. That is the scanning should return back to main page so for that we have to place return
So right now in the sub page, when we try to activate the output, you can see it is not working. So why it is not working now? We didn't call the sub page. So right now, I'll try to activate the switch. So now page two will scan. So now go to the page two. So you can see it is working. But already you know how the sub pages will work. Subroutine concept. So while the page is scanning, whatever the output status it was, it will maintain. In between, if you cut the subroutine switch. Right now you can see it is working correctly. But while the output is on, we just uh, stop the sub page switch. So now what happens? While it's scanning the output, it was in on state. So if the input is cut also, it will maintain the on state. So always when you're using this uh, subroutine concept, it may be in any PLC. Before cut the supply, you have to check it. Whether output is in off state, then we have to stop it. Otherwise, what happened? Your logic will work wrongly. Because the subroutine we're using for what? In a machine, when we try to produce different products. Maybe in a A shift, we need a one type of product. In B shift, one type of product. Now, the program has been done in separate pages. So when we activate the switch, what happens? It will select that product and that particular program will execute. But if you didn't uh, see this one, output is not in off state, still it is in on. In that time, what happens? The execution will happen wrongly. Okay, so careful when you're using the subroutine. So I hope you understood how to create the user defined function block as well as how to use the subroutine concept. Thank you.